Blog Talk Radio. Thank you so much. Okay. We are live on our Facebook Live. We are live also on Spreaker and Blog Talk, Oracle Divination Network. Thank you so much. And our topic is how to enter into the industry of claim processing, billing, and medical health coding. We're going to be dedicating this to those women who are looking to transition into a new profession who might not realize that medical health records and IT is one of the top-notch professions that is and we want to address that area along with billing and coding and we're going to be talking about home health coding where you can work remotely from your home that is with background training of course we want to equate you to some of the things that have been going on in the allied health profession. Hello, Facebook, uh, Facebook friends. I don't know if you're starting with me or not. We want to make sure Facebook friends are starting with us. So I can't see Facebook friends going on. Okay. I'm about to leave, so. Oh, you're going to leave? Thank you. I'll get it to you. Uh, Facebook friends. Come here, friends. Okay, you finna go now? Come give me a hug. You better take some for that sore throat. Oh, okay. I like to say that in the healthcare profession and in IT, it is uh, a blooming industry where people in the field and finding that they can work remotely from their home. I want you to know that that an additive for corporations because it could save money so they don't have to have absenteeism, the workload is less, people can get their work done while at home because there's not a, a lot of downtime like there is when we to say hello. So I want to talk a little bit about the foundation. And earlier last year I talked about taking medical terminology and also take an anatomy and physiology as a foundation. Those of you who may have been working in phlebotomy, or assistant, or as an LPN, you know about anatomy and physiology, and you probably know about medical term as well. Those are some foundational courses to get you started as a preparatory, uh, to get you started in the profession. We understand we that these particular skills are where you can use them to better yourself. Now, we are live on Spreaker, and to my Spreaker friends, I'd like to say thank you so much for being being more than 100 and following me, and we definitely want to dedicate this show to Spreaker consistently on the money and following us and being a part of what we're doing. So um, those women who have asked me about, what about employment and claims? How can I get in the field of claims? Claims area. And literally, you have a division of claim processors, you have coders, and then you have billers. 
So you can get your credential in billing alone, and you can become a claim processor and endorse with the certificate. However, I'm talking about gaining the knowledge, claim processing, and coding. Now, coding is an animal all of its own where it's such heavy concentration that they now have a certificate for a one-year program in coding alone. And you can take the billing class separately, too. There are a number of different companies out there as well as going back to school to become a claim processor. A lot of companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield, they have been noted to train you on the job train you on a job so that you know exactly how to process a claim from front to finish. And it is a process, and it is a step-by-step process. Yes, you're going to have to have a little medical background and medical term, so you can look at the diagnosis. You look at the procedure, what was done to this patient, and it helps you to read the doctor's summary so that when you are paying this claim, you know exactly what is utilization review, what is customary and usual for that particular procedure. Now, I've been uh, a teacher for quite a while, and I taught for Blue Cross Blue Shield for their claim processing. And I've had the opportunity. Hold tight, please. All right. You seem like you're coming out with a cold. No, I don't. Lay your arms up on the side. Okay, and we're live again here. Thank you so much, audience, for following me on Facebook, my Facebook friends. Hello out there. Let's see who we have. Richard Jackson, hello. Billy Thomas, how are you? Let me see that we're on. Uh, I want to invite some people, Facebook friends. I'm in the Okay. So I you to come in. Let's see. How I could do that. Uh, Facebook friends, it says invite Facebook friends. Let me see. Okay, let me see how I can invite them. We're going to tag some Facebook friends and see if we can. I have never had Facebook friends in my speaker before, but we're going to see what we can do, uh, see how many of them show up. And you are welcome to call in to my blog talk. Please do call in to uh, the, the air. We're on the air, and the line, phone lines are open now for you to call in, so please do. Now I'm going to see. I can tag you. Okay. I tagged a few Facebook friends out there, and hopefully we'll get them to come in. Uh, it's lonely out here, Facebook friends, so please do call in. Once again, we're talking about the industry of claim processing, billing, and medical health coding. Now let me be more specific about the medical health coding. I'm talking about medical health coding so that those people that work in the hospital, this is different from working in the hospital uh, and outpatient. This is working in home health coding hospice and also working in the area uh, of, of nursing homes. And that is a new area that I'm introducing people to. And people, our phone line number is 760 539 
We're waiting for your call. You can call in at any time. And we're going to go to commercial, and we'll be right back. And I'm going to come off this dusty road. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Sonia. Hello, Billy. Hello, uh, Dwayne. Who's that? Don Fuller. Uh, Richard Jackson. Hello, Sonia. Jeffrey. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me. And this is your presentation. I'm going to live here on Facebook as well as on my Now, it's a background And our live talk about the industry of claim processing, billing, and medical health coding. Now, for those people that are new to my channel and who are not familiar with me doing uh, work as I have several recorded um, segments on Coding Buddy. I have taken people from the beginning of coding in the foundational classes of science, anatomy, and medical terminology. I've actually taught that online giving people a sample of what they would be getting involved in. These are professions that you can go into without a prerequisite of a bachelor's degree. And the reason why I'm harping so much on this, it seems like these days everything requires that you have a bachelor's degree. In this profession, you can have the ABCs behind your name, and these ABCs behind your name will assist you in coming into the profession to get other ABCs behind your name, which carry just as much weight as a bachelor's degree would. Because in the industry of the medical field, they usually have in-house training, and they send their employees out to training. And once they get these continuing education hours, they're just good as gold because they can promote within the system. And the reason why I'm telling you this is that there is for the um, – Let's, let's look at um, AAPC. There is the PC, P, PCP where their training requires you to have a two-year associate degree and you can actually sit for the license. Or you can go straight in and sit if you think you're competent enough. Now, the government does not require you to have a bachelor's degree to sit for this exam. It would be nice to do a thorough review. And what I've been offering is a review, telling people let's process through the training material and do the review and prep ourselves so that once we're given a claim, we know exactly what to do with the summary report and the patient's records. We know how to pay the claim. So a lot of you might want to go strictly in the claim and learn how to pay a claim. And when you're learning how to pay a claim, that makes you a claim processor. Then you can pick up billing uh, if they're going to do the side and, and if they decide to outsource it, you can become their specialist in collecting those funds that you have and become a billing expert. Then uh, as you're doing the billing, you can also go and get trained in becoming uh, a coder. And that is somebody who puts the code on for utilization review. To pay a customary claim, you must know the codes for that area, what is customary, and what do most doctors charge, so that these doctors are not charging over the amount or under the amount and leaving money on the table. So it's very vital that you get an understanding what a claim processor does and what a billing a medical billing uh, consultant does. A medical billing may come in and have letters that they send out to the patient who are not paying their bills, 
giving them a last chance before they send over to a collection agency to collect on that bill. So he doesn't want to have a fallout with that patient. They want to keep that patient as a continual patient. So they offer them a deal they can't refuse in paying that bill. And that's what a, that's what a collection billing person would do. Now, let me also go to the audience to see if we have anyone that would like to respond on this. We are taking calls. You can call in at 760-539-3247 uh, to get the guest. Let me see. For the guests to call in, 760-539-3247. You can call in on that line, and we are taking questions and answers. This is the time for people who work as um, uh, LPN or, or nurses aide or phlebotomist, and you want to move up in your profession, and you've had your foundational anatomy and physiology, this is the opportunity to take some internal classes in your job, on your job, that will help you to be able to sit for these alphabets because they don't require you to have a bachelor. And there are a lot of people out there that are at a dead end job and they want to move up in their profession. This is the way to move up when you become a coding expert. A coding expert is in demand and their salaries will be in demand for a while because the doctor cannot run his office without a coding expert there to put the codes on that are customary and usual so that the government won't come in and do an audit. If you are overcharging these patients and putting the wrong, by putting the wrong code on, then you could be targeted for an audit, and the doctor doesn't want that. Because once he's targeted for audit, he's got to explain why he's over his office is over coding more than the doctor down the road. Now, let me also say that some of the things you can look forward to when you work remotely from your home, you can set your own schedule. But most people that come into this profession, they have to have a minimum of five years of experience behind them on the job in the office before most agencies will allow you to remote work remotely from your home. They want to make sure you don't need supervision and that you can handle yourself. How are you doing there, John? Thank you so much for joining me. We have two Johns, okay? John Duvall and John Oris. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me. Now, to my Facebook friends, I'd like to say welcome, welcome. Hello, Jesse Howard. How are you? Thank you so much for following me. And do continue to put the two thumbs up and tell somebody about my show. Let somebody know. Tell a friend to join us and to become uh, not only just a friend, but become a follower. And for those people on my I have so much support in from Freaker, and the following numbers are great. I want to thank you personally for continuing to follow me in such a short time. Put those two thumbs up for me and tell somebody about my show. Now, I'm going to go out to Spreaker, and I'm going to see if I can invite somebody from Facebook again. Feeling kind of lonely over here, Facebook. Let's see who we can invite. Okay. I'm going to ask some people from, we're going to do this again here. Maybe they'll get tired of me calling them and asking them to be, to join me, but I'm going to ask them one more time uh, so they won't say that I didn't want to get them in on the mix. All right. All right, people. So how are we doing? How's my Facebook friends doing? How are my uh, speaker friends doing? How are my blog talk friends doing? Blog talk and I have been together for more than 10 years. We celebrated our 10th year earlier this year, and we want to keep on celebrating our 10th year. So I'm going to tag some people. Let's see. See what happens here. Okay. All right. I sent out the invitation for the clarion call, and I, I'm going to go to commercial, and I'm going to bring you in in a second. Hold tight. Ooh, let's see. We knocked some people down over there on Facebook.
medical field. So the two go together. Now, we wanted to take the first part of the show and talk about how do you get in this profession. But we wanted to save the best for last. I did invite two young ladies, Alexis, and um, we also invited um, Rakira. And we invited these ladies because we wanted to talk about something spiritual. So the second half of the show, to talking about something spiritual. How are you doing, Erin? Thank you so much for joining me. This part of the show, ladies and gentlemen, as we enter this part of the show, we're going to be talking about the journey and the path towards spirituality. How do you get there? How do you know you've been called? How do you know that God has delegated you as the one in your family to lead the family to spirituality? What kind of callings do you have on you? And what kind of unctions do you have where you know that God has appointed you to become not only the monk of the family, but the leader in spiritual things, the guidance, the person who is going to plan for the path you've got for your whole family spirituality and how you're going to be buried, married, and baptized. So let's talk about it, people. Our phone lines are open at 760-539-3247. Call in. Let's let those phone lights light up for this blog talk radio station. Light up the phone lights. We have quite a few people that listen to me on blog talking, and we've had the consistent people that are following. If you're out there, call in now. Now is the time to call in. Speaker, you can call in also. And Facebook, I know you never pick up the pen, but pick and do call in at those digits, 760-539-3247. Let's get on with it. Now, we're talking about a spiritual path, and there are many people misguided lately, and they're not on the path and don't know which way to go. And they're misguided with their relationships, and I'm not just talking about intimate relationships, relationships, platonic relationships in general. They can't seem to get along with their significant others or their friends. They're always having it out with their best friends, and they tend to lose more friends than gain. Well, listen, family, you only need three or four good friends, enough to count on your five fingers. And you consistently doing the right things with those five friends, not lying to them, being a man or woman of your word, assisting them as a mentor, helping them to grow and develop into the person they should be, supporting them in their endeavors and their lifestyles with their dreams. Because when you have a friend, it's someone that believes in your dream and that wants to listen to your dream and hear about what your desires are. If someone's always turning you off and saying, hey, hey, I don't want to hear it. You're always talking about your dreams. You guys telling me about what it is all I do is listen to your desires. Person off. Stop that person right there. If you're my friend and if I'm listening to you about all your desires and wants, by golly, I'm gonna expect you to listen to me every once in a full blue moon. And if they can't do that, when they call, chicka boom. All right, Gladys, I gotta go. Bye. Because they will consume you like, like energy that will zap away from you by dumping on you everything that they have in their heart to tell you, but they never have the time to listen to you or they don't want to hear what you got to say. You are building relationships. Relationships mean that you're ace boom coons and that you're doing things together for each other. You wink the eye every now and then because... He understands, and you understand. And it doesn't have to be an intimate relationship. It could be a platonic relationship. It's okay to have buddies as your friends, but not while you're engaged to somebody or married to someone. you got to cut that off. you got to have a distance and let that person know, we're getting too close here. I already have a fiancé. I'm already married, and we cannot get intimate if we are platonic friends. Now, I see too many people arguing online. They're constantly dogging out the people they say that are their friends. How are you going to dog out somebody that you claim 
is your right hand man. That is your shoulder. And when you cut that person off, you're cutting off your arm and you're now hemorrhaging. And that's what we got to look at. There, there are not enough people that want to be married anymore. What is the problem here? Oh, no, I want to do my own thing and she's going to do her own thing and I'm going to do my own thing and we don't need to be married. What's going on here? Okay. I don't know why I was doing it. <laughs> Can you see me there? Okay. For some reason, it's doing something different here. Facebook people, can you see me? Let me try to see what we can do here for Facebook friends. Something's happening here. Okay. Okay, here we go. Somebody jump in there and turn my television around. Leave my television alone. Don't mess with it. Keep your hands off of it. I'm trying to entertain these Facebook people. All right, Facebook. We're all right now. We're live again. Okay. Now, once again, I've seen situations where people claim to be somebody's friend. Then I can hear them dogging them out, putting them down. And then when the person shows up, oh, hey, Ace Boom Coon, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's happening? Now they're pretending. I mean, I'm not having it. Either you will or you won't. Either you do or you don't. But we are too old and we come too to play games with each other and to pretend to be friends and not let the other person know exactly how you feel. Now, that's the way I feel about you. And it's nothing you can do about it. You know that person, we've been friends for a long time. I am going to adore you. I'm going to be your friend in regards to what you do. But you can't walk over me like a rug. You cannot roll over me like a carpet. You've got to understand that you're going to honor my desires, my wants, and respect me. I don't care if you don't like me, but you will respect me. So we got to get to that point. We got to tell our best friends what we expect of them, what we want from them. We just can't let them continue to walk over us and do their thing and then tell somebody, oh, I'm walking over her all the time. You know, she don't care. I can step on her and she'll never say anything. Now, we're talking about spirituality. Does that have anything to do with spirituality? Can you tell somebody you're spiritual when you're doing those kind of things? And another thing, all of these newfound people who are online now, cutting the cards, reading the cards, they think that makes them a spirit. They think because they went down to the corner store, bought a deck of cards, their Torah cards, now they're reading. Oh, boy, now look, they're moving up there, witch. Quit telling people you're a witch. Just because you know how to burn candles and you know how to put spells up under the candle, quit telling people that you can put your intention in candles to hurt people. I guarantee you it won't be long before your field life will be crushed and you'll be out of business real quick, fast, and in a hurry. We got too many people out here that want to be sorcerers. They don't want to be spiritualists. They don't want to take the time to pray to God. Oh, no, they don't want to put the time in to get on their knees. They don't want to put the time in to say, look, I'm in my quarters with God, and God and I are one, and we are coming into wholeness, and I'm spending time with God, so I become more like God. And then I can tell somebody I can read them without Torah cards. Oh, yes. You can read the aura around people without the Torah cards. And you begin to see into the lives of the people you love. And you don't need all these apparatuses like Torah cards. I would care not to see another person on this airway that has a deck of cards in their hand talking about they are clairvoyant. Clairvoyant calls for more than just reading cards. It calls for being an impact where you can actually see into the lives of others. It makes you spiritual to be one with the universe. Say that, one with the universe. When you're one with the universe, when you 
animal is disconnected from you and injured, you become injured because you and the animals are one. You and the coyotes are one because that's how God makes us in universal attachment. The laws of attachment are written that way. We cannot go out here telling everybody, I'm a specialist. I do reading of the tar cards. Then you keep on doing it. A lot of people are jumping up letting any and everybody read them. Don't let everybody read you. Everybody don't have your best interest. And everybody don't want to do right by you. They want to control you. Get, get rid of your man. Because now they got you by a shoestring, they're holding on to you because every word they speak, you want them to do a reading on you and tell you something about yourself. Then tell yourself, do your own reading. Quit allowing other people to read upon how you're going to fare in the future. That we understand what spirituality means when you're walking in a path. We're not quite on the right hand side or the left but we're on the middle way passage we're on our way but we're not giving in to people who we know are purposely damaging others we know a lot of people like that we know people right now that have hex on other people and that are trying to do harm to them and are trying to make them stumble they better be careful when they dig that first hole that they don't have to dig a second one for themselves we got a lot of people like that oh yeah I mean, some people can come to me clear as day saying, oh, me, I want to know how to get into the spiritual path. They're not looking to get into the spiritual path. They want to know what's on my mind and what I got up my sleeve. You got a lot of devilish people, and they don't don't know how to be. You got to tell them I sincerely suggest you stop lying to me because you're doing nothing but lying. You got to read people. If their intentions is wrong against you, you got to tell them. You can't continue to think that that person has your best interest. We are talking about developing wholesome relationships before to become spiritual. Because no one's going to let you sit down and learn all of their gifts and all of their secrets and hand them over to you. Some people think that this gift that you acquired, that you can just hand it over to them. They have to cultivate their gifts. Excuse me. They have to cultivate their gifts. They have to spend some time with God and working on themselves. Never give your gifts over to anyone. And never cast your gifts to the swine. Because people want to use you to do harm to other people. But we're on a spiritual path. How do we stay on that spiritual path? What is it that we need to do when we know that somebody has it all for us? What do we have to do? We have to let them know, honestly, I'm on to you. I got your number. And sooner than not, you are going to meet your match. I might be soft-spoken. I may be quiet. But don't think I won't put some fire up under your butt. And let them know what you can't put to us. Let them know that you'll throw some fiery darts on them. But don't put up with them. If you have to, take I'm removing you from my tribe. You are no longer a part of our tribe. Dismiss them. You're dismissed, you silly rabbit. And you dismiss them. And don't be afraid to dismiss them. Because they're waiting on the house on you. Because they done told somebody, oh, she going to let me get away with this. She always do. You know, she's a pushover. I don't, you know, I know she's coming back. But you have to even tell I'm sorry, I won't be back. I won't be coming back no more, no more, no more. You let them know. And you clearly let them know you are on to them. A clairvoyant spiritual woman never has to jeopardize her character, her belief system. She never has to change any of those things just to be able to be your friend. A real spiritual woman is on the path to do good and not harm. A real spiritual man or woman is out there trying to do righteous things for his community. And he doesn't have to take pay for those things. He will stand up and be courageous and speak out against injustice. 
no matter what the cost may be. So as we build ourselves up to become spiritual, we must remember that some of us, there's some people that want to speak against us and waiting for us to fall. But if you've done the right thing by God, God will send a laborer in the harvest for you. And that person will be your anchor. That person will be the one that will support you. And he or she or it won't let you fall because the spirit won't let anything slip up on you. It will always bring things to remembrance so that you are not lost and out there by yourself. But we as a people have got to come a long way from where we were. We used to be each other's keeper, and now we are the most devastating thing to each other and criminalistic, I might add to those people that we say we love. We watch them fall and stumble. And when our brother has fallen or sister has fallen, we don't ever come back to pick them up. Well, when you have been strengthened, the Bible says, go back and pick your brothers and sisters up when you have been strengthened. I want you to be strengthened today. And in all you're doing, get wisdom and get understanding and be strengthened and pass it on to your brothers and sisters. Even though they might be in the Willie Lynch segment, like in the barrel of crabs, pray for those people who would despitefully use you and pick them up anyhow and let them know that they were once your enemy. But because you've been committed to recruit friends, that you're going to give them another chance. And let them know that they're walking on on thin ground, shaky ground. So while they are given another chance to be your friend, you let them know that you don't have a problem dismissing them. Because before you walk, how can one or two walk together unless they both agree? If you walk together with corrupted behavior, you'll become like that corrupted behavior. It's very vital that we get an understanding what spirituality means. It's sure not getting a bunch of candles and putting spells out there. It's not getting everything you come to you and you can put a spell out there so they can get everything they want. It's not about that. It's not about that at all. It's about us maintaining our character and having good charisma and being able to understand what the Beatitudes are. Love, kindness, and patience. And those who are able to wait it out and have long suffering, those are the ones that get the reward. There's a reward that can be had for being patient and long-suffering. God gives us that reward, and we want God to hand us a reward and with long life. With long life have I satisfied you. Long life is granted to us for being genuinely good and being uh, focused on the right things to do in life. A lot of us do not live out our life expectancy. Some of us get to live a long life, and you better know it, that with their long life, God has satisfied them. And they're of same mind. Getting old does not mean you have to lose your mind or develop Alzheimer's. Some of us are going to be in our 60s, and when we're in our 60s, we're going to have a clever mind. A mind that is stayed on God is, is clearly uh, visible where we can think things through. And we keep, um, we keep our thoughts and mind on God at all times. I don't know where black people are getting this from. We're getting more devilish than the then as the day go by, we have ways to diminish our We are trying to cut off the path for our, our family members, preventing them from going forward. But we can't say we're spiritual when we're doing those kind of things. So we got a lot of people now professing, and they want to come into our faith. They want to become uh, a, a priestess, and they want to even call on our ancestors and call them I'm spiritual. Well, how, how are you going to call down our ancestors when you was, your mother and father were the ones that were character assassinating us and destroying us? And now you want to call yourself a priestess. I don't think so. We got to fix that. We got to stop telling white people that they can be a spiritualist in our society. Who, is, who are they going to be calling on? Which ancestors? We teach them to go back to their community and do a better job of debriefing their white people from being white supremacists. And we help them to teach them that they don't have to be white supremacists. And then they would have done their job. 
But don't let her come into your camp when they take over your camp. Now they want to show you how spiritual they can be. Be spiritual within your own community. They've done enough to take away our homes and give us redlining and say we cannot buy from white people in certain areas. They've done enough when they prevented us from having the income that we desire and, and living, uh, forcing us to be um, at a lower poverty level. So when they say they want to help, I can tell them there's a lot of areas we can point you in the direction of where you can help, but this is not one of them. But we've got to get clear on this, that we being spiritual, God gave us this gift. He gave us the ability to have to be an impact impact where we can feel the pain and hurt of others. He gave us the ability to naturally heal through sending our frequency and our energy. We are nothing but frequency and energy. We're combustible fire. And when we have high frequencies, we have the ability to send our energy to lift the spirit of those that are lowliest of heart and the brokenhearted to lift them because they are looking for our organs now because they know that with our melanin, our organs generate a lot of frequency. And they are doing all kinds of things where they are, are taking human bodies off the street to distract their organs. All these things we have got to explain to them that we are not for this. And we cannot have you in our camp if this is what you think you are supposed to do to other human beings mutilating their bodies all for their organs. But nevertheless, we've got to come back to reasoning and understanding that as we stay in their world, wanting to live like them, have the things that they have, then we soon become like them. we got to understand we cannot be consumed by material things, and we have got to understand it, is not, it has never been material things that have driven us. We stay focused on the love that we had for each other. Why not embrace each other again, brothers and sisters, the way we once used to love them? The Bible says, oh, you will know them by the way they love one another. And that is genuinely loving each other and caring for each other and doing for each other without expecting anything in return. But we've gotten to the point where we cannot get enough material things. And as long as we are living our lives in greed and cannot get enough, we will always be consuming somebody else's things and covering somebody else's things. But what I want to tell you is that spirituality is a long path. It takes a while to get there. And for those listening audience out there in my I want you to know that we are so happy that you could join us today and come here and support us as well as Raw Talk Radio Station, who I've been with for over 10 years. Thank you so very much for joining us. And we are going to hold tight. We'll be right back at you.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and you are now on the scene with Omika 7 live here, and I thank you so much for joining me today, and to my Facebook friends, I thank you so much for coming on to listen to me, and we um, are going to be inviting you back where we ask that you call in, because these phone lines are open for a reason, so we can hear your voices, and for some of you that have information that you would like to voice, we invite you to give us your opinion. What is your opinion on the whole thing? And if you have a different viewpoint, hear your viewpoint at any time, I invite you to, um, let me cut this off here. We do invite you to be a part of our show and Facebook. Um, I know that you used to be able to write. Let me see if there's somebody's writing here. Okay, uh, five others are watching. Okay, Jesse, Howard, Aaron, Gear, Senior, and five others. Thank you so much, five others, for watching. Let me do a roll call here. Hello, Aaron, how are you? Aaron Gear, Thomas Anderson, uh, Cheryl Williams, Russell Harrison, Jesse Howard, John Duvall, John Aris, Richard Jackson, Duane, Dwayne Fuller, Sonia Jefferson, Billy Thomas, Richard Jackson. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, listening audience out there for Blog Talk, we want to thank you so much for listening to us and being a part of our show. And this particular segment of the show was to focus in on spirituality. How do we get there? And what is the process for getting there? And this was a two-part show because we had more hours. We are able to get the show in. We are able to get a two-part show in to talk about other things. And I put that uh, second segment on. For those who are interested in and walking on a, to a path, and getting connected to a way of life. There needs to be more uh, priesthood training out there, or preparatory priesthood training, for people who want to be on a path, who no longer want to attend church, and who are looking for a way of life. Well, I will say, Europe of Faith is not a religion, it's a way of life. And we'll talk a little bit about Europe of Faith. What is Europe of Faith, and what is Ifa Faith? Europe is a way of life, it is um, a natural culture, and um, most people that think that they can come out of their own culture and just embrace this, that's not so. It is a culture. And most people who are European are not practicing African culture, so it's kind of hard for them to embrace that. But there is a spiritual side of this where there is requirements for prayer, um, requirements for meditation, spending time with the creator, Ola Dulamare, and there is time where you are being used to work in the community. It is communal uh, focus in on directing your life to being an evangelist, a healer, working with people in the community. So, um, and, and there's a lot of people that want the glamour of becoming an actual priestess without the work. But you cannot become a priest without the work. There's a lot of work involved, almost like a monk, where you're committed to doing a lot of work and learning a lot of things because you're called upon to do healings. You're called upon to directly guide people spiritually, mentally, and morally. And you're called upon to do weddings, to orchestrate weddings and baptisms and dedicating children back to God. So it's a lot of work involved in it, but it is not too difficult. Nothing is too difficult for God. And God will give you the whereabouts you need to get on that path because it's a long journey. Now, after one finishes that journey and completes that journey, they are initiated and they're tested to see if they can carry out that responsibility. Now, a lot of people do just priesthood and priestess work, and they do nothing else because it's overwhelming, all-consuming. A lot of us who are priests and priestess we are on a part-time mode. We are not doing it full-time because it's all consuming. But it is a path to be on for spirituality, and it's a, it is a great path to be on, and it's great when someone even thinks that they are ready for that kind of path because God will supernaturally help you to get on task and get ready for that path. 
So we're going to get ready to go to a commercial again, and we invite you to get up and dance and shake a tail feather if you feel led to. And uh, I see a lot of people that sometimes they don't want to get up and they don't want anybody to think that they're square. But here's your chance. I needed that little stretch out. Okay. How's everyone doing out there? How are you doing, Richard? Billy? Sonia? Duan? Richard? John? Duval? John Ori? Russell? Cheryl? Thomas? Aaron? Jesse? Shalanda? How are you, Shalanda? Harry? How are you? Greg? How are you? Okay, once again, our phone lines are open, and you now can call in at 760-539-3247. And you'll be live here on the broadcast on our show, Oracle Divination Network, here where we deal with the paranormal and the supernatural. We deal with spirituality here. We uh, have readers that come in, and some of our readers do take callers to give readings. I do not give readings out unless it's for the nation, the general nation, and for the public. I don't do individual readings. However, I am capable of doing those, but uh, we are not running a business here where people can call in to get their oracles done. I do believe in having the child dedicated to oracle reading and their right hand of Ifa, which is a destiny reading. All of you should consider getting a destiny reading. We're going to have a session where we do destiny readings to teach you how to do your own destiny reading so you can find out what's in store for you, what has God called you to do on this earth. As a spiritual being, we all have been called to do something special. We all kneel down before Oromala, and we entered into a contract with Oromala and told Oromala why we were here and what our mission was. 
at that particular point, Oromala has held our secret gift about our contract. He's held that to his heart, and he has only Oromala knows that particular contract agreement. And only Oromala can extend the, the actual time of death. He can extend that, and he can deter it if he needs to. So we need to get acquainted with Oromala so we can ask time here on this earth and ask Oromala to remind us what it is that we agreed to do when we came here to earth. Oromala is God's right-hand man. He is second to none to God. He actually sculptured and molded us while God gave us the spiritual breath of life. And more about African spirituality so we can take away those false stories that we've been given while people have colonized religion. We can learn about our real religion, our real African centristic traditional African religion and faith. We can learn about Ile Ife, where they call heaven. We can also understand that we make heaven uh, in in our atmosphere. Heaven is in our actual being. It is nowhere out there. But we can get an understanding of what the requirements are when we are judged and what happens when we judge. These are all unique ways of teaching, and they're not the same way as a Eurocentric teaching, and we must understand that. And we come into knowledge a different way. We're oral people, but we're also written people, too. We believe in writing things down, and don't let anyone tell you that Africans only speak in oral language and they didn't write. We were actually involved in writing and we were putting things down in writing, and we were specialists in writing, to be exact. We were uh, the writers of the world. So I want you to get to know that because I don't want you to think that we were ignorant. Okay, what are we doing here? I don't want you to think that we were ignorant in any kind of way. We were very intelligent people, and we had the gift of orator, and that meant we were writers, so we wrote things down, we publicized and wrote on the walls, and we were publicists as well as copywriters, so we had that gift among us, and we should continue to, let me say uh, to my friends out there, Shalanda, you're welcome to call in, we can take your phone calls and hear you live here at 760-539, we have dedicated the second half of our show to understanding what spirituality is, how to develop relationships, what are good relationships, and what causes our relationships to go bad. What have we done in our relationship to cause them to go bad? How have we uh, fell short? And what must we do when we fall short? We definitely must go back and repent because God is faithful to cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness and we can start afresh, anew. And we can get in right standing again. But when we harbor falsehood in our heart and lie about our dealings, then then we keep that sin. And that sin we have to be judged for. And no one wants to be judged in the end. We are all being judged on a daily basis. And we must live a life that is unreproachable. And we must certainly do something that's right by our black African brothers and sisters. We must not continue to... uh, destroy them through what the European colonization did to us. We must understand that we stood for each other, we fought for each other, we went down into the miry clay, and we fought in the war together as we fought in the Seminole War, and we won. We have to understand that we were victorious. We were not always running away and getting our heads beat, but we stood up. And we fought in those wars, and we were victorious. And we must understand that we are out here on the front line fighting now. Though our weapons are not carnal, we don't deal in carnal weapons. Our weapons are spiritual and mighty than a two-edged sword. And as we use our fiery darts, we use our words to fire people down and to shoot them down, but not to physically kill them. But on that account, I want you to understand that you've been called to do something mighty. And I see a young man that's up here. If you'd like to speak, you can call in at 
760-539-3247. This is your chance to speak with your only, and you can get a live conversation, and people can hear you. If you are up for it, come on, Greg. Uh, Greg Childs, come on and, you know, give me a call, Shalanda. You can call Jesse, and we're second half of our show about spirituality and being on the path to spirituality, be you man or woman, what is your path for being on for spirituality? What are some of the things you're doing to change your life, to make your life better? And now is the time to dedicate yourself along with your children back to God and let God give you the right hand of Ifa and put your child and you on a path so you know where you're going when the end comes. You know where you've been called to go. You don't have to join a church to know where you're going, but you do need to have a oneness with God and a desire to serve God and work together with God on one accord. This is how you do your dedication reading, and this is how you dedicate your life back to God on purpose this time because you are going to remember that you made a promise to God to come down here to do something special on this earth. Now, are you about your father's business? Are you about your father's business? Are you just chewing the fat? But I, I think a lot of you are about your father's business. You just don't know the path and which way to go. Well, we're offering you that opportunity. The doors of the church are now open, and you can come freely and boldly and make your request known because God wants every individual to remember that contract that we had with God and the contract we had with Aromala so that we are on task and on purpose and doing the things that we promised to do. But you cannot do them if you're all entangled in confusion and you don't know which way to go, you don't understand uh, what God has called you here to do, you are literally lost. Let me help you get you, get you untangled. Stay tuned. Right, it should be coming through. Try it again because I'm on here talking now. All right, bye.
Okay, we're going to Okay, hold on one minute here. I'm trying to... Hey, Joy, I'm getting ready to send you an invite. Did it let you go through? Uh Uh-uh, I'm getting ready to... I'm going to send you an invite and see if it'll let you come in through your email. Okay, but uh, it's saying the same thing. Okay, let me try this here. I'm sending you an email. Let's try this right here. Okay, tell me if you get this. Uh huh, it's gonna be. Check your email. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to um, send an email to someone. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, how are you and how is everyone doing here? Let's see here. Six twenty-seven, ninety-six, twenty-seven. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, how is everyone doing? Joyce. Hello, Joyce. Okay, now what is that? Joyce, she was just in the room. I, I had just called you and put you in the room. No, that was me. That was me saying hello. You, did you hear me say hello? 
Okay, I'm a, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to call you again. Pick up your phone. I'm gonna hang up, and then you pick up your phone. Then you'll be in there. Bye bye. <clears throat> Hello, Joyce. Hello. Hello. Joyce, can you hear me? Joyce, can you hear me? Joya? Hello, Joya? Joya? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, you can hear me. Okay, good. You're on the air. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joya White joining us uh, on our live discussion. Uh, basically, we're talking about second part, the path to spirituality and how do you get there? What are the things you need to get there? This is a longtime friend, ladies and gentlemen. Facebook friends are listening from the side. Uh, we have Jesse, Shalanda, Harry Anderson, Greg, Charles. And then we also have Aaron, Thomas, Shirley, Russell, John Duval, John Orris, Richard Jackson, and Di- who is this? Duan, Sonia, Bill, and Richard. They're on our Facebook Live. And um, we're going to invite Mrs. White to give us her input on what is spirituality and how do you get on a path to spirituality. Can you share that with us, Ms. Joya? Hi, how are you guys? It's a pleasure to be you guys on this evening. Um, first, you've got to be awakening. Hallelujah. You have to be awakening. Most of us are asleep. When the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is called the Hurrah HaKadosh, that means the breath of God, the breath of Yah. I call him Yah. He told me to call him, his name was Hallelujah. When you say Hallelujah, he told me to call him Yah. That means the voice of God, the breath of God. And believe it, and he is a set apart spirit. So we be born again, not reborn. We be born again. We come into the spirituality of the Holy Spirit, which drill within us. He tries to awaken us, but we stay asleep. We just say that's just a dream. That's just a dream. Oh, what was that? He said, I've come to awaken you. I come. He said, My child, my children, know my voice, and a stranger he will not follow. Hallelujah. So he said, I, he said, I would give young men visions, and I give old men dreams, dreamers. He comes in our sleep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when he comes, lots of times we'd be afraid. So he, when the Holy Spirit, Hurrah HaKadosh, that means the Holy Spirit, the only one, when he came to me, I was asleep in a dream. So he, he, the whole, when the Holy Spirit comes, you do not want to frighten you. It will seem scary, but you do not want to frighten you. You do not want you to be afraid. The first thing you say, be not afraid. Be not afraid. So what I'm saying is on tonight, guys, hallelujah. He called me, told me, hallelujah, hallelujah. So when he came to me on one of the evenings, it sounded like it was a train coming. I used to live by train tracks. But at this particular night, there wasn't no trains running. It was a silent train. And it, tra- it was coming through. I wouldn't wake up because I thought it was a dream. I thought it ain't nothing but the train. So what the Holy Spirit who rocked out the dash done with me was I had a china cabinet in my room. Hallelujah. And it started shaking. And it shook. And it shook again. Then he said, open your eyes. The Holy Spirit said, Holy Spirit. That was drilled within us, we were to die to set apart one. He came and said, Be not afraid. I said, Oh my goodness. So when he visited me, I thought the China cap was, you know, was shaking so hard, sh- shimmering, I heard the dishes shaking. That's the only way he could wake me up. So when I woke up, there was a big, bright light. Hallelujah. A bright light was so bright, you've never seen the type of light in your life before. I can't say where you guys been and what journey you're on right now. That light was so bright that I couldn't even see it. I, had put, I had put my hands over my eyes. I was trying to peek through it. So the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, 
this reality of the supernatural. He's trying to get us into the supernatural. Because I'm going to say this, because there are three world ages, the past, the present, and the future. So right now, we're in the now. We're in the now. He's trying to get our Holy Spirit to wake up out of the stupor, out of the sleep, to come into the supernatural, which, which is to come. So what I'm saying is that when he awakened me, when he awakened me, he showed me, oh, my goodness, he showed me a shofar. He said, the foolish thing could found the wise. So I'm saying, what did he show me this shofar for? So he showed me the shofar. He said, I want you to blow this. I, said, I don't know anything about a shofar. That means that's a trumpet in the, in the word. That's a trumpet. So you have a voice of a trumpet. I want you to blow the shofar. And so, hallelujah. So he was showing me in the vision, in the dream, the Hura HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, this trumpet. So I had to go out and search for this shofar, the trumpet. So what I'm saying is, guys, that when we are awakening from our old man to our new man, he said we got to have a voice, our ear to hear, not the norm. We can't be in the norm. We got to be in the supernatural. So he can transfer us from the old man to our new. Hallelujah. To our new. He said we got to train Thank our God. spirit. Our, we got to train. We got to train our senses to know how to discern the spirit of Yah, the Holy Spirit, the set apart. That's right. That's right. He said, "I set you guys apart because you are called. When I call you, most of us stay asleep. We do not wake it. He trying to strengthen our spiritual man. Mm-hmm. So when he trained our spiritual senses, he said it's not it's not like um the the natural or or because we got to have a practice of this thing." Hallelujah. And training and discerning from blood, from evil. We gotta learn the difference between good and evil. So when he took us on these journeys, he said, Be not afraid. So he took me on one journey on the shofar, so I had to go out to find a chauffeur. He said the foolish thing could have found the wife. I'm saying, why is he showing me this chauffeur? So I went out and looked for this chauffeur. I went to a place I could he said, That's not the one. I didn't think I would be obedient. And hear my voice, and a stranger you would not follow. I said, oh, my goodness. So I picked up one of the streets and said, no, that's not the one. That's not, I went to different stores I ordered online. They said, that's not it. So one particular day, hallelujah, one particular day, he sent me to this uh, store. To this, to, I met this chauffeur guy, and he told me that it was illuminating. It was illuminating. That's how I knew it was the one. He said it was illuminating. It was, it was a, a glory because... A, a sign upon this sofa. So mm-hmm. I purchased it. I purchased this sofa, and he told me to blow the trumpet, the sofa that's in the Bible. He said, You was a Joshua. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And so what I'm saying is, guys, that when um, the Holy Spirit is the fire of the tongue, it's the tongue. And we got to know and discern the spirit from good from evil, I'm saying. And then yeah. when he comes to us, we have to, the flesh has to die daily. The flesh has to die daily. It has to die daily. Otherwise, we cannot enter into the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. We cannot enter, because we cannot enter into the, um, the Hura HaKadah, the Holy Spirit, in the flesh. So most people and, and, and we have to, that, And, uh, Joya, we have to kill the flesh every day, that, that daily, we, bringing it up daily. under subjection. Yeah, I'm suggesting we got to kill it daily and put it under the subjection of the Holy Spirit, the Hura HaKadosh. That's the Holy Spirit to set apart. We have to kill this thing, flesh and call. He said, we are not going to be in this carnal minded all our life. He said, I'm trying to get you guys to the supernatural. Mm-hmm. The supernatural. That's your inner man that constantly talks to us. He said, that's our intuition. Say, how's your intuition? How is it? And he's trying to build it up strong. Hallelujah. So he's teaching us how that anointing, the teachers about things, the unseen things. We can be able to tell the truth from a lie. He said, we are the light of the world. He said, when we show up, darkness has to go away. It has to, because it cannot stand the light of Yah or the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. the Son of Pablo, who rock on the dash. So what I'm saying, guys, that 
uh, we have to practice and pay attention uh, who is guiding us, who is guiding us. There are many voices, there are many spirits. The all spirit is not me, he said. All spirit is not me. There are many spirits out there. You got to know how to distinguish what is the truth, what is the lie, what is good, and what is evil. Well, the other so, thing is, Joya, I have been talking on God is going to remove a physical brick and mortar building. We are the living epistacles, we are the temples. Our bodies are going to have to become the temple. We're going to have to become the church. And therefore, we right. say, be ye holy, for I am holy. And we have to keep the temple clean, not a brick and mortar building, but ourselves. And now it's time mm-hmm. to do the work on ourselves and come off from right. among them. Because truly, mm-hmm. he said we have to go to the outside to bring them in from the highways and byways. You can't do that sitting mm-hmm. in the church. Can't do it sitting in no, the church. No, we cannot. We cannot. There are so many dead churches, he said. He you know, wrote Igabob on so many churches because they're not doing the work he called them to do. He said, oh, we are the living epistles. We are the walking, what does it say, word church. We are the walking That's right. building. That's right. He said he, had to, he said he came back in the spirit. He said, like John said, this, this uh, confidence coming, I can't walk in his shoes. So when he came, he came back in the spiritual, supernatural. So we walk in the right. supernatural, and then, and then the flesh, the like, um, Flesh got to die daily. And we have mm-hmm. to know the difference between our soul, our body, and our mind. Now, let, me ask you question, Joy, let me ask you a question. We were speaking on what does it take for someone to get on the path. There's a lot of young millennials who are now going out to purchase the Torah cards, and they think that is the path for getting on the no. path with God. But it can be the beginning of being into the dark, the dark matter, or in the dark world, and headed the wrong direction. And nobody's out there to tell them that that could be opening up the door to a portal that you don't want. You got to be led by right. God. So you cannot. Right. Some went, and some, you know, sent themselves. You've got to hear from God and have an inner witness and let God minister to you, not, you know, flipping cards where you flipping cards yeah. that carries the energy. And there's too many young people that are looking to these cards for their direction and their spirituality. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, the Holy Spirit said that's not the way. That's not the way. That is the way of darkness. No. You will be totally off track. He said there was many, how, how can I say, he said there was many, um, Food says what not in the Bible, and that did not work. So, as we said, the young folks going out trying to find these chariot cards, getting these rigid boards, that's not it. You open, up, you open up the doors to the enemy, and then you don't know how to shut them doors down. You will try to figure out why have all these things happened to me. He said that it will go down to the third and fourth generation uh-huh. because of disobedience. But see, nobody, see, Joya, nobody wants to be in church anymore, and that's for a, a real yeah. reason. They've got a lot of misguidance and pastors who've gone astray, so people are all out trying to find God for themselves. I don't fault them for that. I say go in and fall on your face, find a prayer room in your closet, somewhere you can build an altar, and spend your time mm-hmm. there waiting to hear from God. Because he will truly give you the direction if you cry out to him and ask for guidance. Anyone who asks for guidance, God will give it to them. So we are not lost. We're never lost. But I refuse to stay in these churches where we've got so-called education us to destruction. And a lot of people feel that way. How do you feel about that? Okay, that is true. So many people, so many people is in the churches that is spiritually dead. There's no power. There's no anointing. He's out and left the building. And going into the store, going into their storehouse, all the things they're doing now is that prosperity and this, that, and other. But he's not training. Should they train up a child the way it should go when he get old, shit out of power. He's trying, the Holy Spirit is trying to train us which way to go. So if we continue to be up under these people, that's not led by the Hurrah Hakadah, the Holy Spirit. They will be they will be lost. 
lost generation, and they're going to have all this blood on their hands. They got to get mm-hmm. accountable for these things by leading the people the right direction. That's true. So how we can get in our entangled with these people is like get in our prayer room, get in our room, and pray and see what the Holy Spirit wants, you, what He wants you to do, mm-hmm. how He's leading mm-hmm. you. How do you can encounter these young generations like what I do all this suicidal? Uh, they got this marijuana all out here now, drugs, it's all with chemical uh, disturbing. It's gonna have to give them bipolar, schizophrenic. They're gonna have them all jacked up, and they're gonna have them put in jail. See, the enemy comes in to kill, steal, and destroy. So he's trying to get right. happy king. And don't forget about the kids. They come to accuse you, to accuse the brother. They're gonna mm-hmm. accuse them of four things not by law. Yeah. That is another open door. Well, so isn't, it we funny, as- isn't it funny, Joya, that the administration who's supposed to be setting the example, we find out they're behind all of these corrupted things. We find out mm-hmm. they have been leading us and they have been so far to the left that now we are really finding out where this trafficking for children and women are coming from. And now people are shrugging their shoulders, can't be looking for a real God to come out of the sky because we're lost and mm-hmm. we want God to come down here right now and do something. Shouldn't we rise right up now? and become our own God? Can we come up? Can we rise up to be our own God? You say that's right. We're gonna have to rise up and be our own gods because we're waiting for God to come down here. But He told us to take the mission. He told us, to, oh, Hallelujah! <laughs> right, because He in us. Hallelujah! He's in us. Mm-hmm. Only thing we have to do is awaken that Holy Spirit. He's in us. God is in us. He dwells in our temple. He dwells there. Mm-hmm. Yes. We are going to take a station identification and we're going to go to commercial. Our phone lines are open at 760-539-3247. We have Ms. Joya White on the line. Uh, She has come to speak truth to power about spirituality. If you'd like to speak to her, please call in on the line. She is now available for you to speak to. And we're asking you to get up out of your seat and shake it off because we got some work to do. Hold tight. Gentlemen, and we're back, and you are with Omi Inca 7 live here on Oracle Divination Network. We are back in house now, and this particular segment is our 45th episode in our first season. We'd like for you to continue to follow the leader and to join us as we talk about our various topics. We are focusing in on the African American woman this month. We're coming into February for our Black History Month, and we will be bringing you some live information along with guests to talk about Black History Month. So we do want you to join us in our storytelling and our spoken word. But right now, we're talking to Ms. Joya White, who is a spiritualist herself and who I've invited on many of my shows where she spoke out against what is going on in our churches and how a saint is supposed to carry himself if he or she is to be spiritual, how do we become spiritual? Does somebody come down from the sky to teach us, or do we get an inner witness, Ms. Joy? Can you speak on that for us, please? We get an inner witness. And then we have, 
<laughs> Hallelujah. You get an inner witness. That's the Holy Spirit. And then that's one way. And other ones, and sometimes, like I say, it was saying down. They say we have an angel. We have angels. And we don't pray to angels, but we have angels that come to us to lead us and guide us sometimes in things, in things that we are afraid to step out in. Mm-hmm. So, like, one time I was um, driving. And I, I was picking up our customers. And um, this lady got in my car. And she was an old lady. She was an old lady with bags. So I helped her inside the vehicle. I'm saying this. I'm helping her inside my vehicle. And she told me certain things. She said, don't let nobody squeeze your hand because you were anointed. She said this. She said that. And she said, and watch, be careful with your hands because you don't want nobody pulling your strips in your hand because your hands are anointed. So, okay, so I got to call a destination. It was like around the corner. When I let her out, she just disappeared. Oh. She, she just disappeared. She must yeah, have. And you, you mentioned angels, Joy. You mentioned angels. And I solely believe that God has given us angels. When the deities came down here to earth, he had angels that were actually mortified. The mm-hmm. And the earth, the wind, and through the air, and those angels are still with us, and they call them Orishas, and those Orishas actually are servants to guide us and to assist us, and we can commune with them. We don't worship them, but we commune with them. We make yeah. sure that we provide for them. We petition them to give us directions and guidance. In exchange, we make sacrifices for them because they open up the way for us and give us guidance. Right. Okay. A lot of us didn't know that. We had to be born, <laughs> not reborn, born all over again. You had to. You're born. It means got to be into the um, the supernatural because other people want to understand. You say an angel or something came to you. What was that something? Was it good or was it evil? So our angels do come, and like you just got to saying that we we don't pray to angels. We communicate. Within the spiritual realm and the supernatural, because that will keep us going and t- try to get us to the journey where we're trying to get to. Because sometimes we be misled because see that people can come into your life to throw you off. That called the devil. The, and the, the and Joya, we must remember that we God made us a little higher than the angels. The angels are That's lower right. than True. us, so He gave That's us correct. favor and making us higher Hallelujah. than the than the angels, than the firmament. So he must have took, taken some care to love us very much to make us higher than the angels and the firmament. Yes. But we don't even know our values. We don't know that we can become like mm-hmm. God. We don't know that when Ooh. we sit and meditate with God and we get to know ourselves. And as we get to know mm-hmm. ourselves, we get to know God better because God lives within us. That's correct. That's right. That's right. He put the angels below us, under us. So we are like, our, hallelujah, that is so true. That is so true. We are like God. But what I'm saying is, like you just got to saying, we could do so many things that we don't place our mindset to because we don't even, you, you say, how do say we're going to use 10%? 10%? And then the 100 one you only he want to give us 10% of my uh, conscious mind to you? We mm-hmm. can't go beyond mm-hmm. that point there? That's a lie. That's right. That's right. That's a lot. That's right. Well, listening, listening audience, I want you to know that this topic was driven by two other young ladies. Alexis uh, is one of them. And also we had a young lady um, that wanted to talk about talking about she wanted to open up in a privacy because we're afraid to talk about spirits, and we don't want anybody to know that we believe in spirits. But if we deny God now, he will deny us openly. So we ought to remember that we ought to give homage to God and to the spirit, because the spirit brings all things to remember. It does not let us forget. It recalls all things. It keeps us from having Alzheimer's. There's no way you can have Alzheimer's. But if you start defying the spirit and, 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 and pretending like it doesn't exist, being embarrassed of the spirit, the, bear, the spirit will let you lose all your memory. You won't be able to call anything memory. 
So we got to get with the spirit mm-hmm. and this new millennium group. You got to understand that we don't do it through tarot cards. We don't do it through trying to put spells no. on people. And we don't try to control no. other people's minds. Because the Lisa Franklin yeah. said, trying to make people lose their mind. You better be careful that you don't lose your own. Because that's yeah. what it comes down to mm-hmm. is when you're playing with fire, trying to control somebody's mind. We don't do that. That is not what makes us spiritual. We don't want the power like that man walked into Jesus and said, how can I get that gift? He wanted to buy that gift from Jesus. We don't sell mm-hmm. our gifts. Our gifts come without repentance. We don't sell them to no one. Do we, do we uh, uh, Joya? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here. Because you, you're going to find people that just don't want your gift. How did you get that gift? Tell me how to do that spell, how to work that magic. How, how do I control that, that situation? Mm-hmm. No. You have got to go before God just like everybody else and ask God to guide and lead you. And you and God work on one accord and work in conjunction with each other. You are not going to become so supernatural you're going to outpoke the Pope. You're going to outpoke God. Can you trust me? Can't you trust me? <laughs> yeah. We got to learn to trust him. We got to learn to trust Can't you trust me? Do you I'm trust not like God, but God's ways are higher than our ways. Higher than our ways. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And the Spirit to help us when we run into trouble, we run into things that we can't handle. God makes things easier for us. Mm-hmm. We run into things that we cannot handle. What we do? We go call to God, Jesus, or whatever, whatever name you call him. We run straight to him. We run straight to him. And then when he say things that you can't handle, he can make it easier for you. He'll make That's it so right. easy for you. You can't say, how did I walk across that water? How did I get across that bridge? What even the bridge there, but he got you over to the other side. Hallelujah. That's right. And, and you know, um, I was asked to bring about a topic to talk about spirituality. There's a few who are ashamed of spirituality, but they want to be a acquainted with the magic. They want the magic, but they don't want the dedication of prayer. They don't want to have to prostrate themselves and hit the pavement and cry out to God, but they want all the glamorous things that go along with it. You cannot have the glamorous things without having the work. It, it takes work to become spiritual. Work. It takes work mm-hmm. with you Ooh. crying out to God and being on your face and doing and putting work out when you don't feel like it. And nobody can carry this burden for you but yourself. That's right. Mm-hmm. I have about five more minutes on the line because I got to get ready to prepare for work for tonight. Well, I have about five more minutes. I want to thank tonight. Mrs. Joya White for dropping by to speak to us on this topic, and we do honor your time, and thank you so very much. And we would like to say, uh, O double, and we are going to go out of here where we're going to work it out together. Hold tight. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Joya. Thank you.